Hello, I'd like to talk today about how we take a telescope and convert it for use for astrophotography. So what I've got here is a simple 80mm refractor. We have the eyepiece here, and it's sitting on a mount, and the mount itself uh, has a, a go-to system on it, so it's able to track the stars, and it's able to find different objects in the sky. This is one of our Attic 4 Series cameras. This is how it comes out of the box. Uh, you see it's got a little end cap on here. You remove the end cap, and that comes on a one and a quarter inch jaw tube adapter. When we look down there, we can see the uh, you can see the sensor down the bottom of the camera. And what we need to do is basically replace the eyepiece with a camera. But what we're going to do is rather than just replace the eyepiece on its own. This telescope's got a, uh, a star diagonal, and we don't need that for imaging. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the additional optical element that we don't really need. Let's pop that down there, and then we come up with the, the next problem that we're going to need to uh, find a solution for. If we put this camera into this eyepiece uh, and this focus tube, obviously we need some kind of adapter there to hold it. The focuser in this case is two inch, and we've got a one and a quarter inch uh, draw tube on the side. So what we need is a two inch to one and a quarter inch adapter. Uh, what we're doing to do that is just slide the camera into there, do that little crop screw up. Then this is now a two inch, and that can slide into our draw tube. Okay, now this obviously is physically connected to the telescope, uh, we have to bear something, one more thing in mind, and that is when we have this diagonal in place, it placed the eyepiece relatively far away from the focus of tube. Uh, when we're looking to kind of gauge roughly where the camera is going to need to sit to come into focus, the what we need to consider is the front of the camera should be roughly where the front of the eyepiece would normally sit. So you may find that the focuser itself can just be racked out far enough that that will place the camera in roughly the right position. And here this is pretty close. There are some downsides. Uh, if you pull some focuser tubes out too far, they can start to get a bit wobbly. But what we're going to do, just to kind of demonstrate this piece, is we can introduce some adapters. Again, in the world of astronomy, you can always add some adapters. There are always adapters to be added. And in this case, what I've got is a two inch, and it comes through to a T thread on the side. So it just slides in there. And then in this case, we could use this one just with a two inch short tube and the grub screws there to do it. But what I'm going to show you here is how to connect this up to a T-thread. So if we undo the one and a quarter inch adapter, what we reveal under here is a strongly standard T-thread. Wherever possible, try using T-threads uh, in preference to jaw tubes, because you tend they tend to be more secure. Oh, so there you go. So then this is screwed into the focus tube, it's really quite solid and has very little flexure at that point, and it's in roughly the right place so we should be able to gain focus. So we could look at guiding next, but what I'm going to do is first of all talk about adding filters or filter wheel. So if we have a monochrome camera, uh, it's quite useful to get colour images by using red, green, blue filters, maybe use narrowband to get around light pollution, that kind of things. And we're going to want to use a USB controlled filter wheel to do this. So this is the Attic EFW2. Uh, it has a USB controller in there, so we can use a computer to select which filter is going to be in place next. I've connected this up using the T-thread on the back of the EFW2, connecting directly to the camera. The connection here is a very short back focus, so it's a flush fitting, so it means that we get the camera as close as possible to the front of this optical train which kind of helps with the number of systems where back focus is limited. Uh, what we 
Oops. What we tend to do when we ask for image is to align one of the axes of the CCD up with the RA axis and one up with the deck axis. And to do this simply, you can kind of see where the axis is on this camera. So up is in this direction, that's side to side. And we can align the camera such that that corresponds to the two axes we have on our telescope. What I want to mention is the Attic One. This is an Attic One camera. Uh, we called it the One because it has an internal integrated filter wheel. So it's just the one system to do your RGB and your narrowband imaging. So the, the filter wheel is actually just inside and got a standard T thread on the outside again. These cameras need just a single 12 volt input and a USB connection. So it makes things more integrated and more simple than adding an external wheel onto them. So I'm just going to put a 2 inch adapter in here. Oops, and find the threads. Then this camera itself, let's align the axes roughly, and we'll see what up and sideways is. Plug into the focuser. And then that'll be all the camera, all the equipment we need to do narrowband or RGB imaging. What I should mention now is guiding. Uh, that's basically to take longer duration pictures. So if you want to get into the pictures with exposure times over a minute, up to 20 minutes, and up to several hours if you really want to push it, what you need to do is to actually guide the telescope. So there you have one camera taking pictures every second or so and sending corrections to the mount to make sure that the main camera remains steady and focused on the object you're looking at. There's a couple of ways of doing this. Uh, we could mount a second telescope parallel to the first one and put a camera on the back of that. That's a very simple way of doing it. Uh, but what I really want to mention now is using off-axis guiding. If I pick up one, an off-axis guider here, what this consists of is a tiny little pick-off prism. And so some of the light that's going to miss the main imaging sensor, which will just be in the middle here. So some of the off-axis light will be bounced up, up at a different angle and onto a camera, the guide camera, that's at 90 degrees to the main imaging camera. Loads of benefits from doing it this way. Uh, mainly relates to the fact that you've got a single scope, so a single imaging train. You're not worried about any differential flexion between two different optical tubes. What we also need is a way of telling the mount what corrections it needs to make. So the best way of doing this is to have a connection from the mount itself back to the computer. If we have this, normally if it's a go-to system, we can then control the mount completely by computer to get it to go to different objects. And also when the images are coming back from the guide camera, uh, the computer software will work out what corrections are needed and it can scan, come back through the USB lead and the mount will then interpret how much correction it will need to do. Uh, that's not the only way we can send corrections to a mount. So there's a slightly older standard called the ST4 standard. And this is one of our three series cameras. And here we have an ST4 port. Uh, this was originally designed to work with relays and uh, sort of slightly more basic electronic drives. What this will do is that will link directly into a guider port if the mount supports guiding using the ST4 standard. Uh, the computer will take images from the guide camera, it will then interpret them and work out what corrections are needed, and then send them via the USB link into the camera, the camera will then send it to the mount using the ST4 link. Okay, I think the last thing I'd like to talk to you about is adding a focal reducer into the imaging train. This is actually going to change the focal ratio we're imaging at, so a, an example, a F7 scope could go down to F3. And that will make it a lot faster and more suited to astrophotography. Now the thing we need to take most care of when we're looking at focal reducers is their back focus requirements. So when we're using a simple camera, we could just use the focuser tube to basically space the CCD, the camera, 
the right distance from the front of the uh, the front optical assembly. When we've got the filter reducer in place, these will have a specification for the distance that the back element of the filter reducer needs to be from the CCD. So that will be that distance there to the distance where the CCD is inside the camera itself. We, on our website, will describe how far the CCD is from the front of the camera. You may then need to have some different spacer tubes made or bought to space the focal reducer at the correct distance away from the CCD element itself. Okay, we've mentioned uh, adapters an awful lot. So, in astrophotography, you have many different types of adapters to adapt from different thread types and different draw tubes. The right people to be talking to about uh, which adapters you may need are attic dealers. They will know all about our cameras, they will know about many of the different telescope types that are out there, and they may well even have the right parts in stock to be able to allow you to connect the cameras directly up to your telescope. Okay, we've covered an awful lot. I hope that's been useful, and thank you very much for watching.